Let's try this way and get some. Well, four hours ago, the sign happened over Babylon. Church Dana, its fulfilled letter of prophecy is showing 25, but it's always less than what it actually is. Thirty-four for the second death threat for defending Joseph Smith, and only nineteen for LDS Church confesses Brigham Young was a racist. 25, 34, 19 is actually uh, 29, 36, 35. Uh, somebody, somebody is actually happy that I was threatened with my life. Mormons are getting the church in trouble. I just... I, the downright hatred that they just don't care that they get the church in trouble. That they think they're so powerful and mighty. Alrighty. Mormonstories.org truth claims. Ever seen this? Oh, God. Don't come onto my site and tell me about other people. <coughs> and this is a subscriber, too. See, because this Mormon story is truth claims. It's just another person's speculation. They don't do research. They just take the hearsay that people accuse out in the open and they say, oh, uh, you know, it's my opinion. Well, we can speculate that, well, I don't know, they, they say this, so I, I don't know, I guess it must be true. It's not research, people. I mean, do they not teach you this process? Did I really have such an exclusive education beyond what people in America or Mormons receive. I mean, yeah, I, I took philosophy of religion at the University of Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada, and then went and took a philosophy of religion at uh, the University of Utah. And at the University of Utah, the students just walked all over the teacher. And the teacher could not control the class. Could not teach them the subject matter. They just said, Our Christian God rules! You suck! man. 
system. My God. As if they can say, hey, the more people on the Lord's side, we will establish truth. It's not how truth is established, dumbasses. Alrighty. So it looks like they've got links on the front page of this Mormon stories thing. See, I don't see anything on Smith Senior, guys. So here they have Joseph Smith. Oh, he was oh, he dressed in his military uniform. Yeah, no. This is a bunch of crap, guys. Stay away from this Mormon stories. They may be thinking that they're <clears throat> they pull the same stunt Mormon apologists do. They just do it against Joseph Smith and the church. They haven't learned a thing from what they were miseducated in the church with. But he's a subscriber, and so I'll let him down. So I'll have to. He's probably watching the video if he's a subscriber. Uh, I did my own research on LDS. No critic has 
So yeah, Canandaigua, New York. So when you're looking to try to understand real history, whatever the topic, you look for patterns. You look for crossovers. And Canandaigua, New York is that key to understanding the true history of the Book of Mormon and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. If you just skip over it as unessential, uninteresting, because, oh, yeah, Joseph claimed he looked at rocks in a hat and translated the Book of Mormon by the gift and power of God, well, then you're going to be clueless. You know, if you're a Mormon and you say, oh, well, that's how he did it, Oh, I have faith and I believe. But if you're a critic and you say, Oh, he's a liar. He's full of it. I'm looking at a hat. What a joke. South Park had it right. You know, both are wrong. Joseph, by the way, had nothing to do with the Book of Mormon. He was supposed to take Martin Harris, who was going to pay for it, and fool him into thinking that Joseph did all that when he had nothing to do with it. He had one assignment to distract Martin Harris to get him to pay for the publication of the book. And why? They needed someone else to pay for it. David Miller of the Batavian Press who, who invested in William Morgan for his two books to get published. But in 1826, the Scottish Rites, infiltrated by the Illuminati, would not let him go. They said, hey, you're not exposing us, so we're sending you death threats. They locked him up with false accusations in the Canandaigua jail. <clears throat> and so he couldn't publish the book. David Miller published a book using William Morgan's name to try to recoup the money they lost. But the book still needed to get published. Master Mason of the Canandaigua Lodge, Joseph Smith Sr., took on that responsibility to write the book. He had learned how to forge with the New Israelites when Justice uh, Winchell joined the organization. 
and so he knew how to turn copper into the plates necessary for the print press. Oliver Cowdery also, his dad, was there with Smith Sr. and the New Israelites. And so he too, and probably the dad was involved in this, but there's no indication of it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Oliver Cowdery clearly is involved. And so it's possible that William Morgan or William Cowdery was there with Smith Sr. dealing with the plate making. Has uh, uh, Cowdery then went to be with Smith Jr. to make sure that things got done right this time. And it's those uh, correct history facts and evidence that shape my mindset of the true history. Whereas critics of the church, oh, he's a liar and a, and a fornicator and raped a 14-year-old girl and all these other hearsay accusations. You just believe it. And so your mindset changes against Joseph Smith and you completely get fooled with the hearsay that comes from Brigham Young's orders of those people who said no I gotta make sure that Brigham Young is the true successor of Joseph and so we've got to make all these claims about Joseph in order for Brigham Young to be justified and so Mormons have their own different wrong viewpoint. You have to search for the truth. Don't just trust what somebody tells you according to what you want to hear. Whether it's for or against a position. <clears throat> and so when Heber C. Kimball comes in, he's the opposing force. He's outright lying concerning his dealings with Canon Dagua. So, okay. <clears throat> Let me just add one more thing for his note. the church does not mean it is true or truer than the lies of the church. <clears throat> okay. So please people, don't fall for this. Alright, so Samuel D. Wolf thinks he's a good guy to massacre little children, women, and innocent husbands and fathers. So, F bleep you, Samuel DeWolf. No, <clears throat> Brigham Young did not throw him under the bus. No, don't read between the lines on him. No, 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 again. I just went through this concerning the Mormon stories quote guy. Just because it's not what you want to hear doesn't make it false. Just because it sounds like what you want it to be does not make it true. Don't fall for this. John D. Lee was a Danite. End of story. Being a Danite is all you need to know. He was not a good guy. Brigham Young did not throw him under the bus. This Latter-day Church had no choice but to throw him under the bus by saying, oh yeah, okay, we'll, we'll uh, denounce him, but stay away from Brigham. They're all in on it. 
If you're in the organization, you take the fall for the leader. You do what the leader orders you to do. And so it may not have been a direct order for that direct pioneer group, but there was an understanding order in the group. And so John D. Lee slaughtered those people. It wasn't Brigham Young who came out on his high horse to slaughter them. But Brigham Young was the commander-in-chief who covered it up with his letter on the... with the... Oh, I'm going to write it with the date, the day after, and so then I'll be exonerated. And so, no, I am... Real assess. No, you are getting hid from my channel, Samuel DeWolf. Sorry, man. Do not perpetuate the lies to support that man. All of them. Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, John D. Lee. He went out with the first train. All the Danites went out with the first train to Salt Lake City. No, it wasn't train, it was Pioneer hand cards. Don't fall for it. The poor were left behind because Brigham Young only wanted the master race, his loyalists. And so everybody who was able to go with him were loyalists or were extorted to go with Brigham. You know, the women, gotta have women to have sex with. <clears throat> so don't fall for it. Alrighty, I gotta go for my run now. Don't give exoneration for a man who doesn't deserve it. He, like all criminal organizations, is a soldier for Brigham Young. You need to understand how the system works. Don't try saving his life, because you will get banned from my channel. Bye-bye, Samuel DeWolf. Okay, former Midvale mayor dies, probably a coronavirus. Oh, Elder Bednar on coronavirus and religious freedom. He's the one who gave us the death threat, and so tomorrow, yesterday he did another video thing to, is he backtracking, or is, or is he doubling down? Yes, I want Mormons to die. I think they have the right to choose whether they want to die or to live. <laughs> I mean, dear God. I'm grateful to the... Oh, you're grateful. Oh, the secret code word of Mormonism. See, they did that because of women. Did you know that? Women were feeling that men were being mean and insensitive and authoritarian. So the church leaders started using the women code words to pacify, flatter, and deceive them. That's a psychiatric trick, if you didn't know. They purposely say certain words to string up your emotions and manipulate you with your feelings. It is all a trick. Don't fall for it. What's going on? Come on. Alright. And so, yeah, it's disgusting to hear these guys speak. But I have to record stuff for, for Russ. <laughs> and so I have no choice but to speak out against them when I hear lies and evil coming from their mouths.